to have a chat with uh, Alex about what he's Hi. been doing with Bioinx. Uh, Alex works here at Tricep. He's an employee of AMF, the Australian National Fabrication uh, Facility. So, Alex, you get the fundamental formulation of the Bioinc from our colleagues across the road at IPRI and ESSES. And so what, what challenges then do you have in terms of really scaling that up and turning it into a reliable product? So everything with upscaling um, becomes a lot different. Every parameter of these uh, experiments and the results that we get out have to change. So what we have to do is really explore every single parameter in these experiments piece by piece so that when we are making larger batches of these bioinks, they'll be, as you said, reliable and the same. So there are a lot of challenges, but it's a slow working process. And so I guess you, we also really need to go right back to the source of the materials, don't we? Yeah. Uh, I mean, for some of the research work that we're doing, of course, getting small amounts of material in order to do those small scale experiments is relatively easy to achieve. But, but here you really need to know what's the primary source of those materials in order to ensure quality control. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So we have um, a really, uh, a really nice network of collaborations around UAW and Tricep. Uh, the the one that comes to mind is uh, a lady called Pia Winberg. She is um, uh, our main collaborator in producing us with a type of seaweed uh, uh, called Ulvan. And we here are making bio wings from Ulvan. And it's a part of that nice collaboration that also helps us know that we have a high standard. So before we start making any large scale production of the bioinks, we have to undergo a suite of characterization to know that they're high purity and then you know a very good product for us to work with. So, so you would characterize that material on arrival to ensure its quality and then you would start to do whatever reactions you need to do to turn it into the, the bioink. Could, could we have a look at one of the reactors you would yeah, typically sure. use? <clears throat> so, we start off at these um, smaller scales. This is a good example of a reaction that we would particularly do uh, over at AIM. And so taking the results that we would uh, make from this, we would hope to achieve similar results in the large scale reactors. So I'll take you over to the... So what, what hmm. sort of quantity of material would you be generating from a, a reaction of this scale? So in this scale, I would say you could obtain uh, 20 to 50 grams is the scale. Okay, so that's still quite large scale compared course, to yeah. what they would do in the research facility, right? Yeah, definitely. So it's one step up. Yeah, research is about one gram. Yeah. We're working towards 50 grams here. Right. And now I'll take you to the reactors. These reactors are state of the art. So these reactors, this is a 10 litre reactor. This is capable of um, uh, generating quantities of up to 500 grams. This is, all of this has been uh, controlled by a thermoregulation unit, which is plumbed through the external um, walls. We can control the temperature extremely sensitively. We can collect our material from the bottom, right. which means everything <clears throat> remains extremely consistent when comparing it from the small scale to this larger scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And over here, we have, we go up a, a little bit further, and this is our 20 litre reactor. And this 20 litre reactor is capable of producing kilogram batches. Kilogram batches is, is the, in my opinion, the big leap into an industrial process. Right. And so Sanjeev was highlighting to us when we were talking about the scalability of graphene processing, the importance of simplicity. So what are your thoughts on that? I agree. This is as simple as it can get without uh, reinventing the wheel. This has a simple heater just in, and a jacket to keep it warm with just a big motor to stir it. It's as simple as it can get. Yeah, and, and I guess it's important that the actual chemistries used are, are simple and is the minimum number of steps possible. Right? Exactly. So in the work that we've done here, we've managed to reduce steps significantly from the lab scale. So from the one or two grams, we're able to reduce those 10 steps into two or three. Right. And that's a big part of process chemistry. Yeah, and that, that's a huge step forward, getting down to two or three steps uh, which you need to control and control accurately. And I guess once you have that material, then uh, you've characterized what went in and then I guess you need to characterize yeah. what comes out. And right? so the, the first step in doing that process is to purify it. So on, uh, on a kilogram scale, this is our, our new piece of equipment that we have recently uh, customized. This is a cross-flow dialysis uh, purification system. Wow. This system is capable of uh, running through about 140 liters of our 
elements of our um, reaction mixture. It'll pass through a membrane that sits in here, which works like as uh, via dialysis, and it will uh, throw away any um, any side products and impurities that we don't want, and leave us with the pure material right. in this batch. And so, compared to processes that would have been used before, what, what sort of time saving are we talking about here using the cross? So on the small scale, we would be doing dialysis in dialysis bags, which could take up to three to four days. This allows us to generate, and that was again limited to one gram, this allows us to generate kilogram batches in two days.